Hi everyone, Jughead here. Hope everyone's having a good afternoon. Wanted to give you a little bit of prelude into this next video. We've got a couple fun sandbars up on the Stillaquamish that, well, you know, they got some nice, great, big, straight approaches to them. But sometimes you want to work on some different skills. You want to make things a little more difficult. Kind of like playing a golf course. You know, you can shoot right down the middle of the fairway or you can try to cut the dog leg and go straight for the green. So that's what we did on, on these two. The first one here is called Cottonwood. We call it that due to the big cottonwood tree that you'll see off on the left hand side as I come in. Now you could come all the way down the river and make a blind turn towards this sandbar or you can come in shoot the gap between cottonwood and a big pine tree on your right and then it's about a 30 to 40 degree right hand turn. Big power reduction to start down onto the bar and then the first hundred feet of the bar start to slope back up to a level plateau. So what you'll notice there, big sink, add a little bit of power to catch the sink rate, and then set it into a gentle left hand turn to align yourself as the bar goes around the corner here on the Stillaquamish. I hope everybody has fun with this one. I know it's a lot of fun to fly. So this one coming into Dog Leg, this is a really fun one. Dog Leg's a big bar. You can come into it on about three different areas with very little uh, obstacles. But it's fun to bring this into a different level. We started doing the slalom last year and then this year we added in the, uh, the very first couple turns that you'll see. This first turn is about 135 to 140 degree right hand banking turn. It's starting to let down into the trees along the river. Then we're going to come to the railroad bridge. It's about a 45 degree turn through a fairly narrow gap through the trees. Now it's wide enough for both wingtips and there's no major wood along those. It's, uh, it's nice green branches out there. Coming out of this gap, it's a left hand turn. We're continually in a nice power off descent through here, maintaining our energy, which also gives us some better potential for maneuvering. And there's gonna be two big trees. There's one to the left, there's one to the right. You don't really look at those. If you look at those, that's where the airplane's gonna go. My eyes are gonna be focused on a small tree right in the center. As long as I keep my airplane right over the top of that small tree, I know my wingtips are gonna be good. And then it's skim the top of the blackberry bushes, set it down nicely onto this upper section of Dog Lake Bar. things to watch from the in cockpit video as I come through the slalom. Look at my airspeed. It's going to be very consistently around 60 mile an hour the whole way down. Why? 60 gives me a lot of potential. I've got enough energy to maneuver the airplane safely and effectively. Ailerons are still providing nice response, but it's slow enough that my turn radius is small and I don't have to lose a lot of excess airspeed once I'm in short final for the touchdown. The other thing is watch both the vertical velocity, but more importantly, watch the RPM. This is actually a stable 
decent. Power is not having any big adjustments in here. Yeah, I'm having to do a lot of stuff with the ailerons because I'm simply turning the airplane, but from a vertical profile, it's actually a lot more stable than it looks. Well, I hope you enjoyed those two fun passes into Cottonwood and the slalom into Dogleg. You know, we don't do it every time this way. I've been flying into Dogwood for a couple of years. I was looking for a different approach to bring in uh, a less experienced pilot. That's how I inadvertently found the lower part of the slalom, those last couple trees. By getting a nice straight in approach on that angle, it does provide another option and you can bypass those trees and, and bring it into a, a, a nice, easy approach. But if you're looking to increase your skills, increase your confidence, go out to that local place that you go all the time. Look for different ways to challenge yourself going in and out of there. Now, you're not gonna do it every day. A week ago, I was trying to shoot the gap. I had a slight tailwind about the time I made the turn at the railroad bridge. I knew it wasn't gonna be good through the gap. The power came on, we started climbing away, and we said, today's not the day for that. And that's what's so important, is learning when's the right time and when's the wrong time to do some of these fun things that we do with our airplanes in the backcountry. You know, I love 9.7 Bravo. It'll do a lot of things, and I'm pretty skilled with it, but it won't do everything, and it won't do it on every single day. And that's important for everybody to realize when you watch these videos. We show you some of the really cool stuff, and we're trying to introduce more of the safety background stuff, more of the thinking process that went into it. Now, we know we get the feedback from various videos that, ah, what we're doing is dangerous, what we're doing is haphazard, it's crazy. You know what? We all live our life a little bit different. Between flying supersonic airplanes, I was a firefighter, doing some air show work, Oh, skydiving, you name it. I've always lived my life a little bit more on a higher risk. Whitewater kayaking, cycling through downtown solar racing buses. Find the risk level that is acceptable to you, to your life, to your loved ones, and go out and live your life. And if it includes aviation, that's even better. Dakota and I will see you soon.